All right, I'm here with City Councilman Paul Rotello, and I'm here because um, of the library box fiasco that we have here currently in Danbury. Can you give me a little bit of background on the history of sure. the drop boxes, um, how they got there in the first place, and why they moved? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Mm -hmm. um, sometime in the mid-90s, there was a fire at the library, and it was determined that the fire was started because someone put in flammable materials to the interior drop box. Uh, it caused a lot of smoke damage and essentially destroyed all the material in the library. Luckily, the uh, most of the physical uh, attributes of the library were not um, severely damaged or destroyed, and after some reconstruction and a lot of cleaning, the library was able to reopen, but uh, we lost essentially all of the material. Uh, we decided from that point on that it was probably not a good idea to have an interior drop box, and we took the opportunity back in the 90s of, of putting the exterior drop boxes on the island across the street from the library plaza. The library plaza looked a lot different uh, than it does now. It was pretty much beat up, and right. we have spent uh, since that time, uh, the last 10 years, a lot of money improving it, putting in new granite uh, blocks and things like that. So we've done a bit of a beautification process on the library trees and, and whatnot. But the first thing was to get those boxes out there. And since they were going to be outside, we decided that it might not be a bad idea to make them drive up. The, the unique attribute of that West Street dog leg that is on the, uh, uh, the uh, southern side of West Street is that it's one way. So normally with a, with a drive-up drop box, you have to have it in a parking lot because if you have it in a road, you have to actually cross the lane for the driver to be able to reach over. Uh, most libraries that have um, experimented with drop boxes in the 1950s, that's when they became popular, um, had them on the right-hand side and you had to have your passenger uh, put the material in or since a lot of those cars had bench seats, you could slide over and do it, but no, nobody has a bench seat anymore. You right. have huge consoles in the middle and you can't swap seats. So this really was a great opportunity, to, to uh, a measure of convenience, but even more than convenience, it was a, it was a great idea uh, for the, uh, the uh, aged uh, moms with kids, uh, handicapped and infirm, to be able to come back to the library. And this is the critical point, before the material was due, and drop it off earlier so it would recirculate that much faster. And the faster that you can recirculate items, um, the less items you have to buy. It was okay. determined that it would probably be cost effective in the sense that it might not even cost anything to have these boxes. Uh, there would be a cost to the boxes, but balanced against the money saved from not having to acquire uh, that many more periodicals, the cost might have zeroed out. Now, not, not, we, I, I've never seen a study uh, one way or the other, but my guess is that we're saving quite a bit of money in acquisition costs simply because people in general don't like to leave that stuff sitting around their house, particularly uh, people with kids, you can get damaged. DVDs can disappear, and then you're on the hook for a $35 DVD. Right. The book can get peanut butter on it, then you're on a, you know, on the hook for a $50 picture book. Instead, very often people will take a pile of that material, throw it in the car, and when they go by West Street, drop it off. And that might be 10 days before it's due. It goes right back into circulation that day and right back out the door. And for every item that we get in a day sooner is, is, is an item that we don't have to buy. So that's how it stood for 11 years. We had the drop boxes outside. They were serviced um, by the uh, uh, building department. And this year, the fellow servicing the boxes uh, got sick. And he's now on sick leave. And we are not sure if A, he is going to come back, or B, if he does not come back, uh, if we're going to uh, fill that position, we may leave that position unfilled. We're sort of in the middle of an austerity program. Uh, that left nobody to uh, empty the drop boxes. So what the library staff did was hire, uh, uh, sort of shift some of their cleaning crew temporarily. Uh, they got a bid uh, from the cleaning crew company to, on a temporary basis, sort of an emergency basis, to service those drop boxes. But the price is pretty high. Okay. The library determined it was too expensive to keep doing that. So instead of coming to the council, um, and we just did the library budget in March, instead of coming to us and saying, hey, we need to you know, work on a solution to this, they simply pulled the drop boxes. And I heard about it in September, and I said, look, that's unacceptable. I mean, we, we can find a way to do this um, for a lot less money than the cleaning crew was charging. My constituents are calling me up saying that they can't, you know, they, 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 they can't, um, uh, I guess the library drop boxes were put in a, in a fairly inaccessible area, uh, in a crowded parking lot, a li crowded library parking lot, which meant that the, um, 
Um, drop boxes had to be locked during the day because you can't get into that parking lot and turn around conveniently. That's the current location right now behind yeah, behind well, the not library. Not exactly current location. It's, it's since switched. Then this is now. There's been a, a, a second move. Um, okay. Yeah, the first move from West Street uh, was a move to behind the library to the Bank Street lot, and that meant immediately that you could not have the boxes open during the day because the, the parking lot's packed. Right. You only use the drop box at night, and so people were having to come back and actually go into the library, which is a pretty large inconvenience, to an extent that you stop returning material before it was due. You would only come back and, and return material the next time you were going to take material out. And for some people, that essentially meant when the material was due. Right. Um, and this stuff piled up in houses, and, and you know people stopped returning material long before it was, including me. I, mean, I, you know, I, I no longer had a whole bunch of material in my car waiting to be dropped off. I would just make a point, I gotta get some new stuff, go to the library, take my old stuff with me.